Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss Tim Ferriss's Tools of Titans bears open the tactics, routines and habits of billionaires, icons and world-class performers. Let's look at five of the most versatile tools of Tim's favorite titans. By the way, if this is your first time on our channel, welcome and consider subscribing because we'll help you discover secrets of success from the world's best books and great people. Lesson number one, a proven formula you can follow to find health, wealth or wisdom doesn't exist. If there's anything Tools of Titans has taught me, it's that there is no recipe you cook up to have a fit body, a swelling bank account or a peaceful mind. This book has all the tools and tactics used by the best of the best in the world in their respective fields and yet it's up to you to pick which tool will work for you. For example, let's take a look at what Tim learned from Dr. Justin Marger, physician to Olympic athletes, health experts and elite entrepreneurs. Justin says you have to figure out your own approach to health by running experiments. Of course, there are lots of books out there to educate you and teach you to try various diets. However, that doesn't give you the freedom from having to eat gluten to find out if you are gluten intolerant. In short, what works for a football star might not be good for a professional tennis player or a bank executive. This brings me to the other two topics of the book, learning is good. However, only through applied learning can you turn what you learned into real results. Lesson number two, you need thick skin and a stubborn attitude to overcome peer pressure and be your person. Many university students are lazy. Most of them do the bare minimum required to slip through exams, if that, and spend the rest of their time recovering from their stressful school life. Naturally, the peer pressure to procrastinate is massive. You'd hear, come on, just one beer. I didn't get a thing done today, might as well, and stuff like that. As someone who's always working, that's tough to deal with. Do I love to take a break? Absolutely. Just not all the time though. Professional snowboarder Sean White acquired the mule attitude you need to beat peer pressure and do your thing early in his career. When he was 15, his parents paid for his trip to Japan to compete in an event. Unlike all other athletes whose trips were all paid for and who partied the night before the competition, he wasn't going to waste his parents' money by partying till dawn like an idiot. So instead of agreeing to the deal to just show off and split the prize money, Sean did the best he could and won. He didn't just pocket the $50,000 prize but also a valuable lesson for life. If you're not stubborn enough to swim upstream, you'll find yourself washed away by the currents of life. Literally, this means you will never be able to take the rare actions required to find success. Lesson number three. To be creative, you find the need to experience the stories you later want to tell. Running your own experiments requires a great dose of creativity. The way you grow and shape that creativity is by living your life and having experiences that will form the creative dough you can then knead into a story, a podcast, a blog post, video or even a business deal. This point I make here might not seem obvious to you, especially when your career is still fresh and all you can think about is working hard to make more money. Whitney Cummins, actress and writer of the mega-hit show Two Broke Girls, was stuck in a cycle of making fun of herself, the only way she knew how to make good comedy for years, until she realized she was missing the life that would provide her with something better. It was only after she realized this and started making time for herself and non-work-related things did her creativity reach the peak. As a personal example, I now spend most of my time working as I still have many stories from my past I haven't told yet. 
but eventually those will run out, which is when it's time to carve out more room to roam. The lesson here is, working hard is good and important, but balance is as important to make sure your creativity well never runs dry. Lesson number 4. The small things are the big things. Everything you do, no matter how tiny, will reflect when you do the big things as well. In short, you have to do things consistently and unconditionally. When you do this, you'll always stay on your path to glory and show that you'll perform at your peak when it matters most. Naval Admiral William McRaven, who was the head of Joint Special Operations Command during the Osama Bin Laden raid, said in his retirement speech, If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. By the end of the day, that one task completed would have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that little things in life matter. That's the idea here. The small things are the big things because we are what we repeatedly do. Our actions define us and it's our moment-to-moment -moment decisions that will determine our success. Lesson 5. Failure is not durable. Failure is not for eternity. There's a key to success in every failure. American filmmaker Robert Rodriguez created an initial movie titled Four Rooms. Four Rooms was not just received poorly, it didn't make sales at all. This made Robert the object of ridicule. Not one to give up from the failure he suffered, he discovered two new movie ideas, Spy Kids and Sin City, both which turned out to be major hits and cemented his name in America's film history. In the aftermath of his success, Robert Rodriguez said, You can go back and you can look at it and go, Oh, that wasn't a failure. That was a key moment in my development that I needed to take and I can trust my instinct. I really can. Another expert in the book, American game designer and author Jane McGonigal said it as well. I've learned an important trick to develop foresight you need to practice hindsight. What's the lesson here? Think of your failures as stepping stones to your success as they are happening right now in the present moment. When everything looks like there won't be a way, look at the situation already from the perspective of what you can take away from it and implement immediately. Failure is not durable. It's a feedback that tells you how you can do better. Now, let's discuss. What lessons do you think I missed in this book? What points would you like to add? Which other good books would you like our team to summarize next? We love to receive your comments. If you love this summary, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. And if you've not subscribed to our channel, subscribe now and turn on the notification because we'll help you discover secrets of success from the world's best books and great people. We love you.